Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today and tell a little bit about um, the German real estate market as the main uh, investment target of real estate in Europe. Structured into three chapters, at first I just talk about the German real estate market um, as the main investment target. Then I go on um, and talk a little bit about Berlin as one of the major investment markets in Germany nowadays. And then I have a short outlook, just some food for thought, and um, just have some um, ideas what might be the impact of a slowdown uh, on the investment volumes. What we see here is um, the commercial real estate volume um, within Europe over the last couple of years. Just uh, see that it just increased over the last five to six years um, heavily, um, mainly due to the um, very low interest rate environment and all, many, all, most of the capital just um, went into the um, real estate market. The most striking point on this slide is the, uh, the, the Germany overtook the UK as the main investment target within Europe um, one year ago and remained on that level since then. So Germany now shows the highest uh, investment volume in the European real estate market um, for the time being. UK for the longest time was the main investment target in Europe and that changed now. Of course, due to Brexit referendum, and uh, we will see what happens over the next couple of years. Um, if um, maybe UK will um, come back on that on its former level, or just uh, remains below Germany and maybe even below France, which also surpassed UK in the last quarter. Uh, capital, capital inflows into the German market. So, um, capital inflows into the German market uh, into the European market decreased over the last year from Asia and Middle East. So by 20% and even um, 27 by, uh, from the Middle East, but also increased from the Americas um, by approximately 10%. Uh, that makes sense in kind of that American investors tend to invest into more risky assets, and especially the um, um, US Americans. So in that tight market environment, it makes sense that there share just increased. Um, and over the last couple of months, the European uh, investment uh, or inflows into Europe um, increased back to 45% uh, after a short decrease at the end of 2018. But now we are focusing on the German market. <coughs> this chart shows the um, uh, share of the foreign investment into the German market. And at the last peak of the at, at the peak of the last cycle in 2007, we had a share of foreign investment in the German real estate market of nearly 70 percent. It never, or it, ne it hasn't um, come back to that, or came back to that level over the last 10 years again. So it was between 40 and 50 percent. The main foreign uh, investment targets are Frankfurt and Berlin over many for many years. Surprisingly, though. Um, Munich, uh, which is just um, in this range of 30 to 40 percent. It's a uh, well-known city with a high dynamic uh, economy and, and very wealthy and, and very prosperous uh, uh, market. So that was quite surprising the, with a lower share on, on foreign investments over the last years. <clears throat> uh, when it comes to the share of the top six markets among the uh, German uh, investment volume, I, <coughs> one would expect maybe a, um, a tendency or a trend that one market, for example Berlin, would increase its share over the last um, years from 12% to maybe 70% or 18%, but that didn't happen. So no market really shows an increase in its share between the German markets or a decrease. It's some, sometimes they were below the average which is shown, shown here, and sometimes they're very above their average, but there is no clear tendency that any market changed its position within Germany over the last 10 years. And even if you look um, at the number of deals uh, among the top um, six markets, there is no real um, trend that one market um, just um, loses some um, attraction or uh, decreases its, its uh, function. So uh, what we can see is that um, Berlin 
um, Frankfurt and, and, and Hamburg are the uh, top three investment targets in Germany, also, also here. But um, we can't see really a real shift within the German um, uh, investment market over the last 10 years. This chart shows four sectors of um, real estate. We have um, the office, retail, logistic, and hotel sector. <coughs> and how it that uh, market or that sectors developed over the last uh, 12 years, starting from 2007 to 2019. And those lines are the different uh, markets. And on this, that scale, we have the uh, share of those markets of the national investment volume. So we have here about 20%, 30%, and 10% here. So for the office sector, we saw um, low dynamic um, after the Lehman, cri Lehman crisis, but then all of the markets just um, came back to the uh, investment stage and um, performed pretty well. Frankfurt was most of the time the leading uh, market, but then of course um, we have um, Munich and Berlin, which is the, that blue line here. On the re for the retail sector, it's a totally different picture. Um, predominantly, uh, Berlin was at the outer blue line here, was the main uh, investment target market over the last um, 12 years. Logistics and hotel, totally different. Uh, what we can see here is that uh, from 2007 to 2014, the major investment markets in Germany, that, so speaking of the top uh, six markets, uh, have had a lot, had a huge um, uh, portion of the national investment volume. But since uh, 2015 of 2016, uh, those markets nearly vanished from the uh, of, of their invest, investment importance of, for the logistics cent, um, market. So that means tier two and tier three markets um, uh, were uh, um, the most um, dynamic markets for logistics investments over the last uh, two to three years. Hotel, uh, again, very different. Um, we have some peaks here between 2010 and 2015, but um, for the last two years, um, all the same picture, um, the uh, secondary and uh, tier three markets uh, uh, gained uh, um, attraction for investors. When we look at um, the share of the, um, four, uh, of the four sectors for all Germany, uh, we can see that, um, that's maybe one interesting point, uh, the hotel sector was quite strong, was even stronger than logistics in 2015 and 2016. Um, even here, uh, with the share, here's, here you can have the shares and here's uh, the um, total volume. But then um, again, logistics um, exploded again, and um, or exploded, and um, a hotel lost some of its um, uh, portion to the national investment volume. So, and logistics came pretty close to the retail sector here. So that's also um, showing the ongoing uh, dynamics between the logistics and the retail sector and the um, e-commerce phenomenon uh, over the last couple of years. So uh, that. There could be, um, it's, it's pretty, pretty close at that, that um, um, development here. But office very strong and the main um, target. So the question is, what's the strength of the German um, in investment market or Germany as an real estate investment market? And of course, we have the uh, sound fundamentals, at least over the last decade, and um, the safe heaven status Germany uh, uh, has. But then it's also about the, um, uh, polycentricity of the German economic structure. If you just compare the um, share of the um, capital regions in UK and, and France, which is Paris and London, with a share of the national GDP of um, 30% and around 23%, compared to Germany, there is no market in that, on that level uh, compared to those two countries. So you have Berlin with 4% and no other um, market on, 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 a, on a higher level. So it's much more balanced and a much more div diversi diversified um, economic structure. But what's also interesting, it is not only about the economic structure, it's also about the office market structure. If you look at Germany with the top five markets, um, their shares are mostly even. Right? Maybe not, um, Düsseldorf is slightly, it's a little bit um, smaller, but 26 to 18%, it's, it looks quite uh, even. But if you compare it to um, France and United Kingdom with the predominance of um, 
Paris and London as um, the sh their share of um, the office stock among the five top five markets, it's a totally different picture. And by the way, those 75% uh, of London, that's about 20 million square meters of office space. That's the size of the London market. That's the same size mini cares. It's 75%, 26%. So again, a very um, different picture here uh, of the um, um, German market, much more di diversified and, and balanced between um, the office markets. So, no, oh, funny, funny names here. Um, so this is uh, also um, one of the reasons is that we have um, different locations to different neighbors. We have um, different historic reasons for the, that de development. We have um, different regulations in those markets in Germany, in the top markets in Germany. For example, you can't compare um, Munich and, 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 and Cologne with um, Frankfurt and Berlin in, in terms of um, building high-rise um, properties or schemes within the inner city uh, centers. So it's, um, it's not allowed in, in Munich, for example, to build uh, higher than the Frauenkirche. <coughs> so that's also um, bringing a um, very diverse, uh, diverse picture here. Even if you look at the Stock Exchange League in Germany, uh, which shows um, the market value of listed companies in the DAX and MDAX, it's also many, many um, secondary and t tier three markets among those, um, uh, market, uh, among those markets with a high market value and at the stock, stock exchange. Um, if you look at the um, metropolitan areas in, in Germany, you have the listed companies, with, which are the, uh, the, rot, the red dots. Um, you have them within the metropolitan areas, but also in between. So among them, a lot of those hidden champions, it's always, um, been in the media, and that also that brings um, takes into account that the um, that Germany is a very diversified economy and with a very diversified um, structure, economic structure, and that helps um, the development of the tier one, tier two, and tier three markets over the time. So that all results in prime yield levels of close on average for the A markets um, around 3% and 4.5% for the B markets and below 5% for the C markets um, for the time being. It, it was end of 2018. We all knew, um, we all know that in the meantime, it's even, it's even uh, lower than that. And just um, look at like here, um, the C markets prime, prime yield is now below A markets um, prime yield uh, over uh, the la or within the, uh, at the peak of the last uh, cycle. So when we had 2007, the, the A markets uh, were, have been, in terms of yields, cheaper than C markets nowadays. So it's really showing the um, really tight conditions we are facing nowadays. Uh, now I just uh, jump into the Berlin market because um, as we can, as we will see here, it's the, in terms of prime yields, the uh, most expensive market in Europe. Something has changed in Berlin. Um, as we can see here for the take-up level, which is um, Berlin, is a um, pink line. It's, it's not like markets here, we have uh, some ups and downs and ups and downs. It just, um, over the last 25 years, was on that level. Then we had an um, increase on, um, coming to 600,000 square meter um, per year as a take-up, and now we are above 800,000 square meter. So it's, it's more um, doing one step, um, and then after some years, uh, working on that level, going to another level. So it's, it's um, another development than, uh, for um, more established markets. That, of course, had, um, um, uh, had an impact on the prime rent level in, in Berlin. Uh, nowadays, it's not um, 420, it's even f close to 500 uh, for in, in some areas within Berlin, um, 500 euro, euro per, um, per year. And that, of course, the, um, uh, the prime rent development over the last years and the forecast for the next couple of years, many expect um, those leads to um, seeing Berlin he down here below Paris and, and London, for not London, London just removed here, but other top markets in Europe um, for the now two years. 
So there must be a structural shift in, in the Berlin market. And just, um, but just to show you what has changed in Berlin, because it's quite interesting, because Berlin is, a, is, is um, as, we can, as, we, as we just saw, the, um, the main market in Europe at the moment. We have three bars here um, for different economic um, sectors within the Berlin economy. Uh, for the 90s, uh, it's the bright green uh, um, bar here. The, for the OTs, um, from 2000 to 2009, it's the dark green bar here. And for the tweenies we are living now in, um, uh, it's for this decade now, it's um, the, the pink bar. And what we can see here, we have strong numbers for uh, the, the pink bars because strong growth in those sectors over the last uh, nine years. But there haven't been any um, um, developments like this in the decades before. So. Information and communication was always strong in Berlin. So that was due to the alternative and, and more um, creative cluster we, we've seen in Berlin due to the affordable, affordability in the city. And, but there was no following industries like law firms and consultancies and, and, and things like that. Um, it normally just um, uh, move um, also into those cities emerging cities, but that changed over the last uh, couple of years. So now we have um, much broader um, push for the economy from much more different sectors. As we can also see, all Berlin GDP was around 1% in the 90s and the 80s, and now it's um, 3% in, in, in the current decade. So that really uh, changed a lot. And that dynamic and that development pushed office employment by more than 180,000 um, uh, um, uh, employees um, over the last 10 years, mostly driven by the TMT sector, which is technology, media, and telecommunication, and the uh, business-related uh, services. So those two sectors are uh, driving the office sector in Berlin. We have Berlin and many indices for tech and innovative cities. So nowadays, it's a, a very interesting cluster for those um, uh, for those camp for those industries, but not only for those. Nowadays, we have even more um, sectors being uh, or developing good in Berlin. On the one hand, we just we have the structural shift, or we have the uh, the economic power. On, but on the other side, we have um, available space. After the reunification, um, there are many um, inner city locations, not at the city fringe or not at the um, periphery of uh, Berlin, just within the city where the, the borderline um, just uh, was, not Kudam, but those three markets here. So that really helped um, being, uh, and, uh, main, uh, as the major um, office market in, 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 in Germany and also in Europe. I just want to jump into um, three of them now. Potsdamer Platz um, with an increase in, 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 in rent um, by 70% uh, over the no 50% over the last 10 years, and it was like this for 40 years. That area um, stopped breath breathing for 40 years. Before World War II, the Potsdamer Platz was the busiest place in Europe. Lots of traffic, lots of people um, just moving there, just um, uh, just living there. That changed totally during the Cold War. And then afterwards, uh, we just had this major redevelopment uh, going on there. And that all of that just uh, pushed the whole area. So nowadays, it's less residential. It's more touristic because it's also close to very famous sites um, of Berlin, like the Brandenburg Gate and, and uh, Checkpoint Charlie over here. and. Uh, like the, the wall which was um, um, located there. So, but, but also um, we have two major malls here, Potsdam Platz Arkaden and Mall of Berlin. So this is really a really fantastic inner city location. Um, it's very vibrant nowadays. So Kudam uh, was the, um, and we all, in every sub market we have a decreasing vacancy to below 2%, by the way. Uh, rents went up here by one, around 100% over the last 10 years. Um, very good number. At the end of the name, so during the Cold War, Berlin, uh, uh, the Kudam area was the place to be and within Berlin. It was nightlife, it was, um, it was shopping, it was, um, it was a, Zoologischer Garten was the main train station in, in West Berlin. So there was really a lot of going on in this um, area. 
After reunification, of course, many um, um, people just went there, uh, just want to um, uh, experience all that. But then with the um, regain of the Potsdam Platz area, I just mentioned before, at the end of the 90s, that area really was suffering um, because losing attraction. Over the last couple of years, they, um, which started with the um, new Kranzler Egg and with the uh, Waldorf Astoria, Sofenster and the Upper West, by the way, um, the m most expensive uh, um, office spaces in, Germ uh, in Berlin you find in that tower here nowadays. So that area really changed again and there is also going on a major development in this um, spot here. So we have the bikini um, retail area here, also very famous. And a lot of new concepts, and this area uh, regained uh, attractiveness over the last couple, over the last 10 years again. And it's, f my opinion, it's really the most um, vibrant space within Berlin. It's, uh, I'm originally from Berlin, and I really I like going, um, going there because it's really urban, and it's not so... Um, it really has this um, feeling. Now, Mediaspray, um, I think most of us uh, uh, will understand. So we can divide Mediaspray into the um, northern part and the southern part, which um, started its development with the Allianz areal down here with the Treb Tower back in the late 90s, 1990s. Um, rents went up by 150% over the last 10 years, so that's 15% per annum. Um, uh, stock was already there, but uh, um, one, more than 180 or 170,000 square meter just came onto the market in the last couple of years. And again, vacancy close to zero. That started with the O2, O2 uh, Arena um, built in, in 2007, and then we had a lot of parking spaces around here, but nothing else. In 2013, um, Mercedes-Benz sales team built the headquarter around here, and since then, that all that area um, developed hugely. Um, Amazon today is, a, is one of the main tenants in that area. Nowadays, it, it, looked li it looks like this. I was there two weeks ago. It's, it really, it's, it's uh, densely built like, like that. Now we have the East Side Mall here, so even shopping, Mercedes-Benz Arena and Mercedes Entertainment District just in the middle here, so it's, um, so they tried not only to have the, um, the typical office um, sub-market there, but also um, something for the tourists that are coming here due to um, the East Side Gallery with uh, um, the rest of the building wall on, and that place. Um, the southern part started um, quite earlier in 2002. I can remember in 2001, um, Universal Music Germany just announced moving from Hamburg to Berlin here. It was a, a hot topic uh, at that time because um, at the time Berlin was suffering from uh, not so many huge companies uh, went or moved in, uh, to Berlin at that time. In the meantime, that changed. But at that time, it was a really uh, a hot news. And, and so they went here. For, um, in the meantime, we have the Coca-Cola headquarter, we have WeWork, we have different hotels and even residential uh, buildings here. So that, that stripe is is on that um, passage here. So that uh, also changed a lot. And again, it's a former um, borderline space. Again, that helped um, to, to push um, Berlin as an as a, um, office market. We have the structural shift and we have those um, new sub-markets um, pushing Berlin into that direction. Last chapter was thinking about how to, um, what, was, what, would, uh, what can happen, um, or how to, uh, how can we evaluate or um, assume or, um, what's going on with um, investment uh, capital flows in the next couple of years. And we just try to um, correlate um, GDP change and unemployment. In good times when um, uh, and GDP was, was quite high, we had a uh, 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 very good correlation to the unemployment rate. But then what happens in 2018, um, GDP growth just went down from um, two and a half, or two point, yeah, two and a half percent to, to one, and, one and a half. And the, um, unemployment or employment didn't went down. So that it, it, uh, it uh, just, um, the unemployment rate decreased further on. So 
that um, has no had no effect, um, and maybe this time we are better off, and, and, and um, the unemployment situation might not be affected in the way it was uh, in earlier years when we had a slowdown of the economy. Maybe that could help. Also, we have the demographic um, um, factor nowadays, which is even um, more um, pushing um, companies to uh, keep their stuff and, 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 and or hold them and not uh, cut uh, so many as, as it was in, in former times. And then I tried to um, correlate office employment with investment volume, what we've seen over the last year. And maybe there's a small trend that um, office jobs growth, which is uh, down here by, by 2%, uh, which was over the last couple of years, it was 2% office growth. Um, there was could affect investment volume in a, in a, in a better way. So. Maybe we could say um, if we have a um, slowing down office jobs growth over the, la over the next years, maybe between 1% and 2%, maybe it's a, we have an investment volume close to, um, to that um, level. But then again, we have the um, low interest rate environment, and all of that uh, is just um, unpredict unpredict unpredictable because uh, it's just another driver for the market and who knows oh, how much um, capital needs to go into that. So we have two points um, on the um, final page, which is um, demand for real estate should remain on a very high level um, for the next years um, due to the ultra low interest rate environment. That is not expected to change over the last, uh, next two to three years. And ECB is, is doing its best to, to keep it like that. And then, um, in particular for core assets, for more risky assets, which is um, which, so non-core or core plus, that or even um, value add, that we we could see um, an increase in, in the uh, in um, yield level um, over the next uh, two years for those assets because um, investors are more aware of the risk in the market and maybe that uh, uh, um, will lead to uh, increase in that category of the market.